Yo, Nathan! You excited for that Monkey Man review? Got my shirt on, man. I'm ready. Oh, did what? Where the fuck did you get that shirt? They gave it to it at the premiere. You, you didn't get one? No. Oh, that's weird, because they gave me two of them. What do you mean S two? Sucks for you. What do you mean two? <laughs> Welcome back to the Real Talk Podcast, episode 133. I'm your host, Nathan, and I'm joined by the man himself, Matthew Neves, to my left. Thank you, thank you. And today, we are going to be reviewing Dev Patel's directorial debut, Monkey Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm Fuck so yeah. excited to record this episode. We actually got to watch this film early, mm -hmm. so it's been a while. Like, I've been dying to yes. record this episode and talk about this film with you. Mm -hmm. um, I really, really enjoyed it off rip. What was your, your um, initial reactions? Initial reactions to the film, um, it, it's got emotion. It's got action in it. It's got everything that I want in a movie. And it is currently my favorite movie of the year, hands down. And, I, and I'm not just saying that because we got a pre-screening and a free t-shirt, all right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Yeah. Yo. Shout out to Universal. We actually got invited to watch this movie early, mm -hmm. uh, which was a really, really cool experience. Yeah. We got to go down to Scotiabank Theater in Toronto mm -hmm. and, uh, and catch an early viewing. Yeah. And wow, it was... We were... You know, we were... You know, they invited us to come watch the movie, right. so we're like, fuck, I hope we'd like it, you know? That's I thing. hope, like, yeah. they invited us <laughs> and we don't have to come, like, you know, say, oh, yeah, it's it's all right. <laughs> it's, it's not like another particular movie that we've reacted to, the trailer, and we're like, ooh, and then they're like, oh, you can come see the early screening. Right. Like, I was happy they invited us to this one because yes. after watching the trailer and seeing how stylistic it was, yes. I was very excited for this film. Oh, yeah. And... It exceeded my expectations. Absolutely. The trailer, 10 out of 10. It's one of my favorite trailers we've reacted to. Yeah, it's excellent. And this movie is no exception. I mean, like like you said already, Dev Patel, this is his directorial debut, and he hits it out of the park. He knocks it out of the park. Like, holy shit. He killed it. Fuck. And when you look into the hell that he went through to make this film, yeah, it makes it even more impressive. Uh, I included this... Um, this section here for uh, I wanted to read this out. So Dev Patel did a, a uh, ask me anything on Reddit. Oh yeah, and this response was so amazing. They were just asking like you know w what he had to go through to make this film. Mm -hmm. Ten million dollar budget. Yes, very small budget. It it's one of the lowest budgets I've I've seen from a movie this big. Jordan Peele was not always attached to this film. No, the film was complete. Jordan Peele saw a cut of it. Mm -hmm. The he it, the film was dropped by the studio was stuck in limbo yeah and essentially Jordan Peele saved it made it gave it a theatrical release and right. everything but listen to this I want to read this out this is from Dev Patel oh my god every day we faced absolute catastrophe <laughs> I begged our financier not to shut us down a week before principal photography Jeez. we were meant to shoot in India then COVID hit I lost my initial production designer DOP and the film was basically dead. <laughs> Then we pivoted and went to a tiny island in Indonesia where we could create a bubble in an empty hotel for the whole crew of nearly 500 people. It was a grueling nine months of absolute joy and utter chaos. All the locations were prepped for months and we lost them day of. Oh my God. So we had to adapt last minute. The borders closed, so I couldn't bring lots of supporting actors. So I ended up having to put in every ta every tailor, lighting guy, accountant, etc. <laughs> oh in front of the God. camera. Speaking of cameras, most of our equipment broke, and we couldn't fly in the new stuff. So we literally shot on stuff on mobile phones, GoPros. <laughs> when the crane broke, we ended up creating a camera rig from rope. Holy what? Like, shit! <laughs> that's fucking nuts. Believable. Also, there were days where. <laughs> Oh my God! When I would more. turn up on set, and we literally didn't have any tops on the tables in the VIP room sequence. I asked the set designer, and they said they literally didn't have any money in the account to buy the glass. <laughs> what the fuck? So we had to shoot above the shoulders as our produ producers ran his personal credit card to buy the glass. Holy to shit! To cover the tabletop. Speaking of tables, we only had three or four to break away tables, so we'd perform a huge bulk of the stunts. Cut. Immediately, all of us would get on our hands and knees looking for all the pieces of broken wood to glue the tables back together. What the fuck? When you hear this and you watch how 
polished the final version of this yeah. film looked, you would never think that they were going through. You would never think that you're seeing accountants as extras on screen. No. The film looked so meticulous in its style mm-hmm. and delivery that I would have never thought any of this was going on behind the scenes. Yeah. No, same. I mean, like, the amount of work and hardship that was put into it, it's like the underdog story behind the scenes. Yeah. It, that's, it very much that is. so funny? Like, Dev Patel is is the leading actor in this movie, and the story is very much... It, it's not... You didn't reinvent the wheel here. No. It's a revenge story. Yeah. And I'm a sucker for revenge stories. Same. Especially when they're done well, and this was an excellent example of it. But when you look into how this film was made, he it was literally the underdog story on and off camera. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, Rocky, where... They had, like, no budget for the first movie, and they were just trying to finish it. They had, like, 20-something days to shoot. That's right. And this honestly feels like that. Um, I also read that the original person he Dev Patel wanted, he didn't want to direct this. He wanted somebody who directed in the past. Yeah. So he wanted Neil Blomkamp mm-hmm. because he worked on uh, Chappie with him. And he's like, I really want to work with you, man. Could you direct this for me? And Neil Blomkamp was like, nah, man, this is your story, dude. Like, the amount of involvement you have, you have to do this yourself. Right. It it was a very personal story to him. Yeah. And I think he went the right way, man. Oh, absolutely. Him directing it allowed allowed for him to be, you know, really involved in... Mm -hmm. In the style of it, yes. like the mythology and how that connected into the story, mm-hmm. I thought that was so so effective. Yeah, it's it's really really good. And just like you said, if it wasn't for Jordan Peele, this probably would have been dropped on Netflix without any marketing budget at all. Yeah, this film was in limbo. Imagine this, man. The theater right? experience. This is such a great theater film. Yes. When we, I know we're releasing this episode a little bit late, but mm-hmm. this film is still in theaters. If you haven't seen it. Go see it in theaters. Absolutely. What a fucking movie to see in theaters. It's a lot of people are comparing it to John Wick, like it's Indian John Wick. Mm-hmm. I think it's even more like a Bruce Lee film at times. Yeah. It's you know what I mean? I agree. Well, because the thing with Monkey Man that's different from John Wick, which I love, is the second half of this movie is a lot more dreamlike. It's a lot more psychological with the character. Yeah. You give more shit. You give a shit about this particular character more than other characters because of the revenge story. You have his motivation. You have his intensity. That's what makes this movie stand out from the rest, in my opinion. Uh, I know Dev Patel said he was inspired by Bruce Lee's Game of Death, which you definitely see here. He's like going up the levels, Mm -hmm. like... Yeah, until he gets to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the big boss, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I love that. It felt very even video game-esque at times. For sure. Uh, man, I have so much praise for this film, but mm. let's get into... Um, let's get into the style of the film. Style. That's what I want to talk about. Absolutely. The style of this film, right off the bat, I love the editing. Oh, man. I think the editing in this regard is a perfect example of cutting out the fat. Because yeah. a lot of action films, a lot of movies in general, have these overlong scenes that go really nowhere, really. This one, it's just like, boom, we're here now. The, boom. Pace, the pace was slingshot pace. Yeah. You're in the story from the beginning, and every scene is advancing a character or the plot, and mm-hmm. it's doing it quickly. Yes. It, it, I, I fully agree. Because of the fact that like these characters... These moments, there, there's no moment where it's just like, oh, why is that there? Oh, yeah. why is this there? Nothing felt too much like a cliche. No. Rem- remember we were in the theater and there was various characters in the movie, like there's the comedic sidekick. Right. You know, who's great. I love him. Which is an excellent example of comedic sidekick. Something yeah. that I think lately especially gets done, really gets butchered. A oh, lot yeah, in man. Films. Holy shit, man. Like they drag it on too long. But this character, this particular character that's comedic, is only in it for a little bit of the movie. He's only he's mainly in it for the first half. That's right. And that's yeah. it. That's all you need him for. You don't need he him serves for- his purpose in that first half. Exactly. But in that second half, like you said, there's a tone change. Mm-hmm. It becomes a little bit more surreal. Yes. So there's no place for that. No, there really isn't. It it, it would stick out. And same with the the supposed love interest, which I thought they were going to do in the first half, because mm-hmm. the first half establishes all of these characters that Dev Patel is interacting with. And you're thinking, all right, you got the comedic sidekick, you got the love interest, you got the bad guy. I know what's going to happen. He's going to train. He's going to do the Rocky training montage and beat the shit out of them, right? Uh, No, not really. 
In fact, he's kind of really bad at fighting at the beginning, and it isn't until his training in the middle of the movie that he gets a better understanding of who he is, what he's become, and what he's uh, fighting for. I love that. Yeah. That, those parts are fucking amazing. And the editing, music, and performances all come together because of that. That's why we give a shit about this particular character. You're 100% right. So The style is is so good. Mm -hmm. So refreshing to watch in an action film. A genre that I'm not a huge fan of. Mm -hmm. I don't watch too many straight up action films like this. Like I'm not, you know, when a, if a new John Wick comes out, like I'm not the first guy in the theater. Like, no, I'm. That's not really for me. But this had everything for me. The way they use flashbacks. Oh man, that's when the emotion comes in because a lot of people, a lot of movies use flashbacks so much yeah. that it doesn't mean anything. I mean, like uh, a good example is I recently watched Rebel Moon Part Two. I don't know why. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was fucking dog shit <laughs> film, and that film has like fifty thousand flashbacks that mean absolutely nothing because right. you don't care about these characters. This movie, however uses the flashback but they use it briefly yeah you don't know what it's trying to show until the very end that's right and that's when you build up that emotion that's when you build up the fact that now you know more about this character now you know why he's doing this and he himself is is discovering himself in the process of the movie that's it, right and i just and not only do they use the flashbacks you know briefly they don't overstate their welcome they use them at the perfect times yes. to stress his PTSD from his childhood. Yes. He, he's put in the search, certain situations in his adult life where he gets overwhelmed or something crazy is happening. Mm -hmm. And it reminds him of the craziness of his childhood. Yeah. With his whole town being burned down and his mm -hmm. mother being murdered. Yeah. And the way they do, like, there's just one shot. It's a small thing, but it just sticks with me so much where... He's feeling overwhelmed. He's running through the kitchen. Yeah. And there's like, there, people are cooking and a big flame goes up. Yes. And then it cuts immediately to a flame going up on his childhood home. Yeah. And the way they did the edit was so seamless. I was just like, it was one of those moments where I just had my mouth open and I was like, wow, this is exactly. jaw drop moment. You know, I was like, wow, that's, that's cinema. Like little moments like that. Yeah, you, you that's cinema. You, it, they stand out to you because of what this movie is trying to bring. You know, it's bringing something different while also still being a revenge story. Because that's, right. that's the thing. A lot of revenge stories do the same shit all the time. But this one feels new. This one feels refreshing in a way that I don't think a lot of action movies are trying to do now. They're just trying to do the John Wick copycat. And that's, and that's why I, I completely agree. A lot of people are going to say John Wick, but it's in India. It's like, no, I think... Uh, I think this is doing something a lot more different. Something that I prefer, in my opinion. It's a disservice to say that this is an Indian John Wick. Yeah. And John Wick is a great film in its it own is. right. And the fact that it's being compared to John Wick says something. Says mm. that this is a great action movie. Of course. But it's a disservice to say that because this movie does so much more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the way it's, it, it's telling a story here. And the action. Yes. I'm going to say better than John Wick. Mm -hmm. Some of these fight scenes... Especially in the second half. Yes, second half. Oh my god! I yeah. seen a big criticism is like the shaky cam, like the shaky cam style mm -hmm. of of shooting. I've seen some of this criticism online about yeah. this film. Uh, you know, there's plenty of films that I hate that use the shaky cam yeah. in the fights. It, it can be disorienting at at times. Here, I didn't. I don't didn't feel like it was. The sound design was in. They, they made a choice to make you feel like you're in the fights when they're happening. Yes. The cameras are very up close. There's a ton of close-ups used. Mm -hmm. And I guess now when you hear the backstory, I guess it was by necessity. Oh, yeah. Like, I could see the technical right? issues. Well, because I, I kind of agree with the shaking cam for the first half. Yeah. The first half was more noticeable, especially when they're at that, uh, what is it, sex house or whatever. That one felt... That one felt the most like Batman Begins fighting, Jason yeah. Bourne, you know, shaky cam. And I think it's because of the fact that <laughs> I was thinking in my head like, okay, uh, this location must be really fucking small. Yeah, it, it felt, felt like claustrophobic, it. Yeah, right? it felt, but yeah. it, it, not just like for the sake of claustrophobic for the audience, but like for the crew itself. It's like, we don't have any room. And I was just thinking, he's like, maybe they, they could get a bigger room. But then you telling me this fucking story. I'm like, yeah, this was their only option. Yeah, fucking miracle. <laughs> it even, like, it just, when I did the research on it, it just made everything more impressive. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, the fight sequences I thought were so great. The mm-hmm. fight, like the cho- the choreography was amazing. Yes. It had memorable moments, even like funny moments at times. Of course. I think of the elevator one where he's like pushing the knife with his face. Yes. <laughs> into his neck. Oh my God. That will stick with me forever. I love mm-hmm. that moment. Uh, man, this, it, or, or the one where he uses the tray to cut off the finger. Yes. Oh, love that. So good. I love how it got silly. It got weird at times. Mm-hmm. And it, it was, it was great. That's the thing too. Is like, we, I, I'm talking a lot about the second half. The first half is really solid in establishing, by the way. Like, I think yeah. it does a really good job at that. You see him with the monkey mask and you see him fighting and he gets the shit kicked out of him and stuff like that. I like that style. I like the fact that it doesn't show him to be like this badass. That's right. Oh, he's I, such a cool guy. That's right. And I mean, typically a guy like Dev Patel would not be casted in a film like this. No, yeah. So they kind of reflect that, right? That he's kind of this everyday guy mm-hmm. who gets put into this ex- these extraordinary circumstances, but he's a fighter, right? He's an yeah. underdog story. Exactly. It's very much an underdog story. He's not this trained killer mm-hmm. like John Wick. No. You know what I mean? No, yeah. He's, he's far less experienced he's a guy who like had a fucked up childhood and all he knows is like fighting and he he's not even good at it so yeah so he he throws his fights so that people can bet on him like to make people money like i love that he was the he's the epitome of an underdog Mm -hmm. and the first half of the movie sets it up great they don't tell you too much about him but what for what they do show you you understand what kind of a guy this is. Exactly. You understand from the various characters. And that's another thing to add, world building. I fucking oh, love wow. this world building. Wow. I, I love, what was it, the Charlotte Copley guy, the announcer, yes, the MC. That's right. Oh, he's such a good character to start off the movie with because he's so cynical. He's such an asshole that it's just like, this is the world that he's in. Everyone fucking hates him. It's like, here's here's like $10 for the fight. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You're Nobody nothing. Nobody gives a shit about him. Yeah. Even his friend that's the comedic relief <laughs> is only fucking with him yeah. because he gave him the play. He said, bet against me on this fight. I'm yeah. going to lose and you're going to make money. Mm-hmm. So he literally has nobody in this world. No, not really. I mean, he gets a few interactions here and there, like the girl, like the woman that he talks to. But again, they don't make that into a love interest. Love that choice. That's awesome because we see that all the fucking time, especially when it comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, I guess they're in love now. And you and I both thought they were setting that up. Yes. Oh, the first half when they first talked and, you know, he sees her getting like assaulted by that guy. That yeah, because they think- really like take their time with that scene in particular. Yeah. And you see Dev's face like he's, you know, disturbed by it. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, they're setting up the love cliche here. No, yeah. And they didn't. No. Nope. And they didn't. They, what they really set up was, you know... Dev and this girl had things in common, which yeah. was that they were both trapped in their own ways. Exactly. Trapped and circumstances of like, you know, just the, how they grew up. No, yeah. That's all it is. And it's basically both of them have an arc and have an ending and have a, a happy ending. I don't want to say happy ending, <laughs> but, but their, their arcs are completed. Are completed. There yes. we go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Because yeah, right. you have that interaction at the very end when fucking everyone's dead. Mm-hmm. And Dev Patel looks at her, and she looks at him, and they're like, "Okay, we're gonna go our ways, you know, separate ways." And no kiss, just, no kiss, no nothing. They no just nothing. look at each other, and they're like, "All right, we we made our, you know." Uh, the <laughs> silence of that scene was everything. Yeah, it was oh. perfect. It was better than any dialogue you could have written there. Yeah, Di- but- the lack of dialogue in this film also helps it very much, especially the second half um, with the dream sequences, with the with the cutting to. Uh, the footage of people getting hurt and abused by like uh, police officers and stuff like that. Those that footage intertwined with Dev Patel training and punching that bag. Yeah, I was like, I know what this film is doing, and it's not being super obvious with it. It's contrasting the climate that he had to deal with as a child to what he has to deal with now and how it's still haunting him. That's right. That's what I love, and that builds your your revenge story. You, it's not just a mano y mano. It's a this I'm fighting not just for me, but for my mom, for everyone that's gotten fucked over like that's this. Right. And it's, it's like, it, yeah, I mean, it's person versus person, yes. but it's person versus self. Yes, right. It's both, and they t- tell both of those in such a fantastic way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I love it. I love when it gets weird. I love the yes. temple, the temple scenes. We have love really it, man. Time. 
Those are so fun. Yeah. I love the scene where he, he you know, he takes the whatever poison. Mm-hmm. I love that. And then the, um, the guy gives the quote, the pain will leave you once it's done teaching you. I thought yeah. that really stuck with me. Yeah. And, and how he goes through his childhood. I thought that quote was so perfect. And the way they tie in the mythology. Yeah. Um, with like Hanuman and the monkey man. Mm-hmm. The way they tie in the imagery, yes, to like what's happening with them. Oh, oh my god! I mean, like we we could go on all day about that because Seriously. of the fact that, and that's the thing too. We're not just talking about how awesome the fighting is. No, we're talking about stuff surrounding it, and the reason why that's the fighting works is because we give a shit about the main character. So when you get to the very end of the movie, you get to the climax, you get to the fighting of that moment, you care even more. You're more motivated. You're like, I want this guy to, I want this guy to fucking win. The the issue I think people might have, and I hope this doesn't distance people, is that, like you said, this isn't a John Wick film. The second half doesn't have that much action. It's more character focus. That's right. It's more dreamlike focus. And a lot of people might think, well, I, I want to see another action scene. I want to see him do this. I want to see him do that. It's like less is more in this regard. I completely agree. You get the fight at the beginning where he fails. Then he trains, and then you get the fight at the end. Which That's I, perfect. The fight in the bathroom, I love that fight. That's good. That fight was excellent. That's how you start it off, because he doesn't right away kill the guy. He's like, oh, fuck. I fucked up. There we go. Like how it would really happen. And that's why this the story is not really a person versus person story. It really is a person versus self because in 15 minutes, he's confronted with the guy who killed his mother. And yeah. he has a gun, and he can shoot him, and that could be it. Yeah. But mentally, he hasn't, he, he's not there yet. No, he hasn't yeah. overcome his trauma. It's too easy. And in the moment, he can't, he can't do it. It's too easy. I loved that. Yeah. And, and again, like that whole fighting moment and stuff, it's like, he's not, he's taking the hits, man. He's taking the fucking hits that's because right. you got to have that. It, he can't just be like, and that's the thing about like John Wick chapter four. I love that movie. The action's great in that. But John Wick is literally like Captain America. He's, yeah. he's like, 50 bullets can be shot at him, and he'll be like, yeah, I'm still walking. Dev Patel, it's like, you get one bullet in him, and then he falls in the water. <laughs> and yeah. he's like, is he dead? Like, I remember, Nathan, we were like, is that, what's going to happen? Seriously. <laughs> so you got, he has to get healed up. It's like, you got to give that time, all right? Because if you don't, it's not, it doesn't feel uh, deserved. It's like the new Rambo film. They did the same shit where it's like Stallone's like 80 years old. He gets beat up by like 50 gang members. And then 10 minutes later, he gets healed up. He's like, I'm back. What do you mean you're back? That's There's right. no fucking way you could be back. You'd be dead. You're fucking dead already. That's a good point. Like this movie actually, yeah, they have a fight sequence and then they show that he actually has to heal up. He has up, injuries, yes. <laughs> most action movies will just blow right by. Yeah, like the Jason Statham That's ones right. and all that shit. And it's just like, buddy, give us some time for you to give the impression that you healed. You don't just heal in two minutes after a fucking stab wound, a bullet wound. Oh, I just took the bullet out. I'm fine. No, you're not. You're still bleeding. What the fuck? This one, they do a great job at doing it. And I... I'm still in shock that this cost $10 million. $10 million budget. It looked so beautiful. Yeah. Um... It looked yeah, it looked amazing for ten million dollars. I'm happy this film made some money because yes. of the low budget. It made twenty four million dollars worldwide, nineteen yeah. million domestic. Uh, <sighs> it should be way fucking more than that. Oh yeah, it should have been number one opening weekend. But like, I understand it's it's Dev Patel's directorial debut, and I'm sure his next one will have more hype around it just because of how good this one was. Yeah. But uh, let's talk about that. What do you want to see next from Dev Patel? Uh, any other genre. I feel like the reason why I'm saying that is because with action, I think he did his own style, his own way. And, uh, <laughs> the amount of bones that he fucking broke for this movie, I'm like, okay, maybe try something a little different. Right. You know? Yeah. We didn't even mention that. I think he broke his hand, <laughs> his, broke wrist. his wrist or something <laughs> his like his ribs. <laughs> so for the sake of his health, maybe do a thriller. Yeah. He could be a detective. I'd be down for that. Or maybe even a Western. That's the thing. I, I the one thing I do not want because this movie is perfect on its own is a sequel. No, no fucking don't sequel. Do it. The way this film ends, I'm not going to spoil it. We're not going to spoil it for no. you because you better fucking see this in theaters. Mm-hmm. The last shot of this movie, perfect. It is the perfect shot for the revenge story, in my opinion. I completely agree. And we talked about that briefly right after we saw it. Like, man, this film is leading up to something and it's doing it so well. 
But I I was sitting there thinking, like, how are they going to end this in a satisfying yeah. way? Because of all the shit that was going on and the way they, they took the surreal approach, you really don't know how it's going to end mm-hmm. until the end. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, halfway through, I'm, I'm watching, I'm thinking, man, I love this right now, but if it has a little bit of a cop-out conclusion, I'm not going to like it as much. Yeah. And it delivers with the ending. It's the perfect way to end a film like this. It's so beautiful. It reminds me of a bunch of films that do the same thing where he is confronting the devil. Yeah. And we see how That's he right. does it. We see how he handles that. That's right. And it's, it's, it's like you said, with the line of pain. It's like, well, how else are you going to deal with it unless you confront the most evil person in That's the right. room? It's, it's a personal revenge story, but it's also a good versus evil at that <sighs> end. It's like... It's not just about Dev Patel getting his redemption. It's mm-hmm. literally the it's, people. It's good versus bad. Literally. It's, it's amazing. And, and and they don't do any CGI battles. They don't do any... Because that helicopter, I was worried that they were going to do something with it. No, it's simple. Oh, it man. It is simple, and it needs to be simple. Yeah. Um. What, I just... Oh, my God. Monkey Man. It fucking gets it. That's it, the one thing I would say. It fucking knows what it is, and it fucking gets it. It gets it. We've been praising this movie for this whole episode, <laughs> but it, I, I promise it deserves it. And I'm, I feel like I'm at a loss for words at, at times to explain how good this film is without just breaking down every single part of it. Same. Uh, you just have to see it. That's yeah. it. This is a must-watch film. I think it, it appeals to a huge audience. There's going to be something that you like out of this film. It's a must-see, and like you said, Mm -hmm. this is the best film to come out this year so far. Yeah. And I see it at the end of the year. I see it being in my top three, maybe top five at at the very least. For sure. Same here, man. Unless unless there are some pretty, like, insane fucking movies coming out. I mean, I I looked it up. This one still is a good contender, man. This is a great fucking contender. I agree. What was your... Let's let's do a couple questions to finish off. What was your favorite scene of the film? Favorite scene of the film is uh, that montage when he opens his chest... Oh, that one is- yeah, yeah. Because you build on who he is and what he's become and the legend and the culture that he has. Yeah, I love that he he wasn't scared to get weird in, in that scene. Yeah, man. It works really well. And best performance, uh Shocker. Oh, yeah. Shocker, it's Dev Patel. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking gets it. I knew since the Green Knight that this guy had that in him. That's right. That that action, that intensity, that her- heroic moment. And this this is pretty evident. Um, final ratings? Final ratings. You fucking know it, man. Eight out of ten, four out of five stars. I would give it a perfect rating, but I think give it, this movie should have had a little bit more money for right. those moments. I agree. And I feel bad for saying that, but it's just like... It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. I think eight out of ten is is my my rating as well. I think with a rewatch, I might rate it a little higher. Yeah. I, I only saw it one time. Same. It's definitely a film I'm eager to see again very soon. I'm mm-hmm. probably going to try and catch it one more time before it's out of theaters. Monkey Man, yeah. go see this movie. That's all we could say. Go see it. Big thank you to Universal for inviting us to to see it. We had so much fun with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll end it off there. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to your boys. And we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Brush your hair. Peace.